Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the morning update here on this major severe weather outbreak here. It's looking very, very uh, likely to possibly be caught now in so-called tornado outbreak here. It's very likely we have a major new update on the SPC outlook. We now have a level four moderate risk, and it has been issued throughout areas into the south central, and I actually expected it to be there, but I have major new updates as well on my own map, and this map's going to be showing you what I think the SPC outlook's going to be looking like later today. We have major updates on the radar, SPC outlook, Cape Valleys, wind shear, and all of that, which we'll be looking at. If you are new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, guys, as well. Uh, let's try to get to 2,190 subscribers. We are less than two, or we I think we are two away. So please subscribe and also please be sure to share the channel to any friends or family to help my channel grow and also share it to as many people as youth uh, as uh, as many people as possible so as many people as are aware of the severe weather outbreak so we can keep people safe. But without further ado, let's get this video. So we're going to be looking at my new map here I made this morning. This is what I think the SPC outlook is going to be look, looking like. So that means the red means moderate. That means the, uh, that means enhanced, light, and uh, marginal. So this is what I think it's going to look like. Um, so I think we definitely have a, a potential for possibly having an enhanced risk now be issue for also the Midwest now. I think this is our uh, two areas of focus here. So we have one area of focus today that's going to be for Illinois parts of Missouri, maybe even parts of the little uh, the tip of Iowa. And then we have our also area of focus right here as well. So we have two big areas of focus. This is why such a widespread threat. So the enhanced risk is I think it's likely that we could have an enhanced risk be issued here. We do have that five percent chance for tornado risk there. I wouldn't even doubt maybe if they even uh, maybe connect this, but I don't think that's gonna be as likely. That's gonna be for areas like uh, near Peria, uh, Washington, Illinois. Uh, not far from Joliet, also including Quincy, and just north of St. Louis. So this is what I think is going to be happening with an enhanced risk. And then I think that the slight risk will be extending a lot more all the way to the south central and a bit more to the east, including parts of the other side of the Mississippi River, including uh, parts of western Mississippi and wa western Tennessee. And then the other area of focus is the south central. So I think they actually, I'm going to be starting off with the enhanced risk. I think they might extend this enhanced risk a bit more into Louisiana, uh, especially as we get in the next up in the afternoon. I think they'll definitely extend this, uh, this uh, enhanced risk more and more to central and southern Louisiana and extending it closer and closer to southern, uh, southeastern Texas. It really is like we're going to be seeing a potential for some very powerful bands in these areas. And then the biggest update of all, is the moderate risk and we have a moderate risk for areas into south uh, for much of uh, eastern Oklahoma far northeastern Texas and far western Arkansas I think they might extend it a bit more widespread into northeastern Texas and I think this moderate risk as we continue to see these bands moving eastward I think a moderate risk might be issued a bit more all the way to the northwestern tip of Louisiana and a bit more into western Arkansas so it looks like the worst of it will be maintaining in the Texarkana area not far uh, also in the uh, Lufkin area, Tyler, Texas, and it won't be too far from Dallas. So Dallas and Fort Worth, you guys were, uh, I believe, an enhanced risk, last risk, and you guys saw absolutely nothing. But you guys are definitely going to get hit really, really hard at this. So this is my map. Uh, maybe if it does, if we have another huge SBC uh, update, I might change it. But as of right now, I think this will be uh, mostly accurate throughout the whole day because Again, this is for the what I think the future will look like. So I'm hoping the future will be as accurate as this. So you guys got accurate and 100% accurate information. But again, this is not 100% guaranteed. This is just based on all the models I look at and all the things we'll be looking at. This is just based on what I think will happen. Now let's get into the models. So we're we'll going to be taking a quick look at the National Weather Service. So we have very, very strong winds out here from this low-level jet. And this is going to be causing that really strong or the really uh, decent amount of wind shear in these areas, which is why we're going to be seeing a really, uh, really that severe weather really ramping up out here in the in the Ozarks in the Midwest. That's why, because of that low-level jet, and that's going to bring incredibly strong wind gusts. So we already have wind advisories out here for the north, for the Dakotas. That is where that low level jet bring those really strong winds as of right now, and then it will dip out here all the way to the south central. So we're definitely seeing very strong winds in these areas as we get later to the today, and especially tomorrow, we're going to be seeing extremely windy conditions for the southeast as well. Uh, so we actually have severe thunderstorms from warnings now. Out here to areas near Arkansas and parts of Texas, we do have our first bands developing. Uh, this won't be the the, the big, uh, really huge severe weather maker or tornado maker, but this is what we have right now. That's going to be heading for the Shreveport area. We have a new severe thunderstorm warning now just at the Shreveport. 
and uh, just uh, east of Lufkin. And then we also have another uh, strong system here uh, that could possibly be a supercell that's going to be moving near the Texarkana area more into now southwestern Arkansas. So that's what we have right now. These are just our first pop-up systems, especially with the, this is really, we're going to be seeing a lot of pop-up storms in Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas due to the really high amount of Cape Valley and also the overday heating. So we're definitely going to be seeing a ton of pop-up storms here. Now let's take a look at the uh, current radar. As you can tell, we are seeing uh, our first, uh, we are seeing these uh, severe weather now developing and a really heavy rain in the Midwest. Again, that's going to be causing a ton of rain for Rochester, Iowa, and as we get later today, it will become a lot more of a severe weather, severe weather threat now for southern Wisconsin, parts of mostly eastern Iowa and north central Illinois. So this is what we have right now uh, in the National Weather Service. As you can tell, my map's not incredibly different. I, like I said, I think they might extend this moderate risk a bit more to Arkansas and maybe in the tip of north uh, of northwestern Louisiana. But here is again our area of focus, our moderate risk. I really, I'm we're seeing a ton of moderate risk here. I I can't really keep track, but I think this might be our fifth moderate risk, fourth and fifth so far this month alone. Uh, I think we've had 10 plus so far this year, but this is by far we've had more than 10 this year. But this is our area of focus right here. So going to be an uh, for eastern Oklahoma, far western Arkansas, and northeastern Texas. See, it's not even that far from the Dallas area that's moderate risk within 20, 30 miles. So uh, I don't really think this moderate risk will extend, will extend west. I think if it will extend, it will be eastward. So I also think this enhanced risk might move a bit more into Louisiana. I think it might move closer to the Alexander area. And I think this enhanced risk might move a bit more closer to the Houston area as well. But this is where I think we have that potential, of course, for seeing maybe an enhanced risk be issued right here. I think we have the potential. So it looks like the slight risk might extend a bit more eastward as well. I think really everything might extend eastward. The marginal, slight, enhanced, and even the moderate. They, it won't be a lot. It could be a little bit. But there are some, I really agree, that they're going to be pushing by the east a lot today. So in general, this is our, we're going to be seeing the worst of it as of today, just based on the level the levels but i think we'll have another area right here uh area focus a bit more closer to uh the rockford area and all of that but here we're missing our best chance for tornadoes large hail and especially damaging winds damaging winds is the primary threat for today so you're probably wondering where's our area for risk for tornadoes is it going to be also the midwest but actually now it looks like our biggest risk for tornadoes is now back in the south central uh, and this also this 5% chance for tornadoes has now extended a lot more to Texas. I know it's, pretty, it's, it's been there since today, but it's gotten a lot thicker. And as yesterday, the bigger area was right here, and it was like a little stick from the side. But now it's a huge uh, area of focus. So as you can tell, even the 5% chance is very widespread. We had that all the way from Wisconsin to Texas. So this is why I'm saying it's likely we can finally call this a potential tornado outbreak. Obviously, we can't say it, it is until we actually start seeing these tornadoes right now. But I think it's a lot It's a lot uh, closer to possibly being named or you, where you're allowed to call it a tornado outbreak. Because earlier, it didn't seem like it was going to be a really so-called tornado outbreak, just a severe weather outbreak. But now it's looking a lot more likely. So here we have the 10% chance for tornadoes, which is actually a very high risk for tornadoes. Uh, so that's going to be for the far northeastern part of Texas. It looks like eastern Oklahoma is going to get hit the hardest by far this outbreak so uh south of tulsa and also for western arkansas of course i think this five percent chance will move a bit more into texas louisiana and i think that we have the, i don't think we'll have a 10 percent chance uh for that missouri and illinois area but because we'll have to have a moderate there but i think this five uh, percent chance is definitely becoming a lot more widespread so again tornadoes is our it's basically our, our smallest threat based on percentages but it's of course tornadoes will be all, obviously a lot more dangerous um, than, uh, or it could be a lot more. It could be dangerous, more dangerous than hail, depending on how large the hail is and winds. Winds and tornadoes also going to be the pro really primary threat. But here is the hail threat. So, as you can tell, it had the fifty percent chance is extremely widespread. It is there for I believe more than like nine states, which is absolutely crazy. We have. Uh, we have, uh, of course, now the Wisconsin area, that's one, then we have two, then we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We have ten states in this 15% chance, which is absolutely crazy. That is such a widespread threat. That's literally all the way from Wisconsin 
down to Texas, which is a really, really big widespread area, just absolutely crazy, tons of hail, and we would have a significant severe um significant risk. That's gonna be for areas just north of, north of Dallas and also including the Oklahoma City area, Tulsa, you guys are under that thirty percent chance. As you can tell, the hail threat, the highest risk isn't necessarily for those areas in the moderate, it's for some parts. But as you can tell, it's going to be more for the areas in enhanced risk for Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, even just north of Dallas. And wind threat, like I said, is definitely the highest risk by far for today. We're going to be seeing absolutely strong, extremely powerful straight line winds. Definitely going to cause a lot of debris. Uh, we're going to definitely be seeing uh, trees and power outages. We're going to be seeing a ton of that. So our highest here we have our highest risk of a 45% chance. For uh, damaging winds, that's gonna be 60 knots or higher, and that's gonna be for areas out here into uh, northeastern Texas, near Texarkana, just uh, also just east or west of Texarkana, uh, western Arkansas and eastern Oklahoma, and then we have a significant severe risk that's gonna be a, a, including the Dallas area. That's gonna be a bit more widespread to Kansas, near Joplin, a bit more to Arkansas, Oklahoma City, Tulsa, and then for I know this isn't really important, but even tomorrow we have a slight risk, and I'm actually in that slight risk, so. I could also be potentially seeing some strong severe weather. So now we're going to be looking at, taking a look at the NAND 3KM model now to see that really we're going to be seeing the future. So in the next couple hours, here we have these stronger bands here. Uh, they could be getting a lot worse as we get over day, of course, with the over day heating. Maybe seeing a lot more energy. As you can tell, not necessarily really strong winds uh, at this point. Isobars aren't necessarily close to each other. Could be maybe 15 to 20 miles per hour. But here we have these powerful, uh, really strong rain, potential flooding. For, uh, the Minneapolis area and as we continue to move on we're gonna start seeing these winds getting a lot stronger with this low-level jet you're gonna be seeing these isobars a lot closer now that's definitely gonna be causing a ton of wind throughout these areas isobars are incredibly close that's gonna be a ton of wind for Kansas and much of the central plains so here we have that uh, severe weather now moving to the Wisconsin area but here we have these pop-up storms from the really high amount of energy in the atmosphere, uh, with also the wind shear strengthening, that's going to be a really powerful band for northern Oklahoma, southeastern Kansas, and this is the why I think we can have an, an enhanced risk be issue for these areas out here into the uh, Illinois area. Look at these powerful bands. These are going to be really, really powerful. I'm going to go back one little hour. So look, this is exactly why I think we can have an enhanced risk for areas into north central and central Illinois. We're going to be seeing extremely powerful bands out here near the Peria area, Peria, uh, Peria uh, and also Washington, Illinois. And here we have these very powerful bands as well for, uh, for just southern uh, Missouri in general, including St. Louis and Joplin. So this is why it, that's why I think it, it could be likely to be, if we have an enhanced risk issue for Illinois, or Illinois and maybe even parts of Missouri right here, they could probably extend or uh, connect with the one right here. So it's potential we can be seeing a huge uh, addition to this enhanced risk later today. And then as we now move later into today, by Wednesday, by uh, tomorrow morning, we're going to be seeing very strong bands now for northern uh, Michigan, your Traverse City, north of Green Bay, you're going to be seeing scattered rain showers uh, for the Marquette area and Eau Claire, but very powerful bands now for southern Illinois, parts of southeastern Missouri near the Poplar Bluff area, and that's going to bring some very strong bands into western Kentucky near Paducah, Louisville, and that could bring, of course, some rain showers and really strong severe weather by Thursday uh, out there to Pennsylvania and to the Mid-Atlantic. Now we're going to be looking at the south central here. Like uh, like we saw on the radar, we're seeing these pop-up storms now developing. As you can tell, here you see that mo that flow of moisture, humidity. Uh, this is where we're going to be seeing these Cape Valleys popping up or just skyrocketing. Within 12 hours, we'll be seeing a huge difference in Cape Valleys. As you see, we're going to be seeing these really strong bands moving all the way to Mississippi, Louisiana. That could be quite, quite severe, and that's going to be not even close to the start of the severe weather. This is where it's going to develop here with that, that low pressure system, 1,000 millibars. You're going to be seeing that, uh, that low-level jet bringing the jet, uh, bringing the wind shear. Again, the wind shear is not impressive. It's not the biggest, uh, really, uh, the biggest threat as of right now or, like, the biggest factor to the severe weather. I think the biggest factor will be the amount of humidity, uh, also with the uh, incoming cold front, all that. So here we're going to be seeing these really strong severe weather bands. As you can tell, it's going to be a huge squall line all the way from Oklahoma to Illinois. That's at least... 700 miles that's going to bring a power just look at these bands just absolutely these are absolutely like crazy these bands definitely be seeing a very high echo tops definitely be seeing extremely large hail out here into southwestern oklahoma 
also northwestern Arkansas. Look at this. This threat's going to go all the way up into the uh, Peria area. Absolutely. This is a, a actually possibly a huge, huge squall line. They will be splitting up, so we'll be seeing that more of a severe weather risk now for the uh, Ozarks and uh, Mississippi River area. And then this is where we have this primary threat. That's going to be going straight through the Little Rock area, heading to, straight over uh, Texarkana. Like I said, like I, like I said earlier, in the Dallas area, how you guys got barely even touched last time, you guys are going to get absolutely wrecked with this system. Very powerful bands, possibly very large hail, damaging straight line winds. And here we have these connecting once again all the way from Indiana to north or to central Texas. Heading going to be this is going to be heading towards the Lufkin area, heading towards uh, the Houston area, moving to Louisiana. This is why I think we can have this uh, enhanced risk move a bit more into Louisiana. Extremely, extremely uh, strong and really possibly tornadic thunderstorms moving into the uh, central part of Louisiana towards Alexandria. And extremely large rain, or sorry, extremely large hail, very heavy rain. And also strong winds out here moving closer to the Houston area near College Station. This is where I think that enhanced risk, maybe slight risk, will move a bit more to the south. And then we have that severe weather risk now a bit more for tomorrow. Where we're seeing some very strong pop-up storms and bands moving into the Wednesday night overnight hours. So definitely we have to also watch out for this widespread severe weather risk. And then we can be seeing extremely big severe weather outbreak now for the mid-Atlantic. So this is definitely a long-lasting outbreak all the way up to the Friday and Saturday days. Now, as we look at the European radar here in the next four hours, we have that really heavy rain developing there. These uh, scattered pop-up storms out here into the south central from the high amounts of moisture now finally coming in. And then finally, in the next couple hours here around uh, later in the afternoon, we see these pop-up storms now to Missouri. Uh, that's going to be also these really strong systems into northwest, uh, northeastern Oklahoma. That can bring some strong, extremely heavy rain now for the areas out there into the um, Tulsa area. And then as we move later into Wednesday, or later into uh, now Wednesday morning, look at these strong bands heading straight over to the Dallas area, Little Rock. A huge, huge, absolutely just major squall line here. That's going to bring extremely heavy rain now for the north, uh, for the northeastern part of Texas, now heading towards Lufkin, now moving towards Monroe, uh, Alexandria, Shreveport, and that bring that severe weather risk all the way to Houston, and even New Orleans, and then we have that potential severe weather risk for northern Georgia, parts of the southeast, so let's see Atlanta, uh, areas in Gainesville, Georgia, all the way up to Pennsylvania, you guys will be seeing a severe weather risk stretching from Wednesday and then by Thursday in the northeast. Like I've been saying, mentioning with this uh, low-level jet, here we have it coming in with the wind shear, uh, that jet stream going to bring it in. So this is why we have these wind advisories. We're going to be seeing very strong winds, powerful winds to the Dakota. So you're going to be seeing this low-level jet right here. This is going to be it. That's going to be moving in through the northwest. Uh... And that's going to be, again, here we have this jet right here. We're going to bring a ton of shear. We're going to be seeing very strong shear by later today. And that's not going to be in the areas where we have that severe weather. But we're going to be seeing very powerful winds for the uh, for the uh, south central and for the central plain. It's going to be seeing also that potential really strong amount of wind shear for the mid for the Midwest, which is why we'll be seeing these really long-lasting severe weather bands. Uh, but as we get to tomorrow morning, this winter is absolutely going to be crazy. We're, or this low low jet is going to be dipping in all the way like this. You can definitely see this low level jet. This is going to bring in a ton and a ton of wind shear for areas into the uh, into the Ozarks and Midwest, even all the way up to the northwestern areas of Arkansas and Oklahoma. So it looks like wind shear is a lot stronger than it was showing yesterday. So this wind shear is going to be strengthening by Wednesday morning, which we saw on the radar Wednesday morning is when we saw these absolutely strong, absolute like like just mental thunderstorms. Like they're huge. Very large squall lines, and that's exactly why this winter is going to be strengthening. And then this is where we see the severe weather risk now all the way up to the uh, Ohio Valley area. So winter is definitely a lot more likely, and it's going to be a lot stronger. And this low level jet now dipping all the way up here into the now the southeast, and that is why we'll be seeing a ton of wind advisories to be issued for the southeast and east coast by the end of the week. And that's why we have that severe weather risk for the southeast because we're going to be seeing a ton of wind shear, and we're going to be seeing that uh, like that uh, southerly flow uh, out there from the Gulf. And that's exactly why we'll be seeing that severe weather risk now moving all the way into the mid Atlantic and to the northeast by Thursday. And then seeing that risk now all the way by Saturday for the New England area. So Winchester is looking a lot more likely just the past couple days. So Winchester, again, it's not exactly impressive or major, but we're going to be seeing a lot more Winchester in these areas, especially by Wednesday morning. This is why we won't be seeing extreme, extreme bands 
later to, like all day today throughout the day is why it's to be happening more in the afternoon hours and evening once we see this uh jet sh this low level jet definitely strengthening causing a lot more uh a lot more wind and wind shear and instability so now we'll be looking out here into the stp significant tornado parameter for the oklahoma area arkansas and northeastern uh texas so the next couple of hours we're gonna be seeing our maximum around five on this stp which is a a, a kind of a smaller number there but as we now move later on today, this is going to go up to closer to an 8. So this is where we have this moderate risk, and then we're going to be seeing a very high risk or a decent chance uh, for tornadoes, even in the, the northwestern part of Arkansas. We actually have around a 6 out here, which is actually above a really 50% chance. And then we even have an 8.2 later on uh, around the Tuesday, the Tuesday around 11 o'clock, which is when that jet stream strengthens. And then we see that risk uh, kind of winding down for the Oklahoma area, northeastern Texas. The K valleys are absolutely impressive here. So we're going to be looking at the Ventusky one. I feel like it's more accurate than the uh, with the pivotal weather. So San Antonio, you, you guys are seeing a ton of moisture moving in. Around 5,000 joules per kilogram. You can see this moisture uh, is definitely strengthening this flow with the humidity, moisture, uh, instability. College Station, 4,400. We're going to be seeing close to 5,000 joules per kilogram near the Tyler, Texas area. And this flow is going to be going all the way up into the uh, the Midwest and the Ozarks. Going to be seeing even some numbers popping up in Iowa, 2,300. Even some closer to the 3,000s all the way in Illinois. But look at these numbers. These are absolutely very, very high numbers for the areas in Central Texas and uh, parts of Texas. That's why we're going to be seeing a ton of pop-up storms. Austin, 4,600 joules per kilogram. Going to be seeing around 5,000 joules per kilogram out here just south of Austin. Going to be seeing near the Tyler area. 4,600 joules per kilogram, Longview, 5,100 joules per kilogram, and right here we'll be seeing, of course, a 5,100, all the way to Tulsa, 4,000, Springfield, 3,700, and then by 8 o'clock tonight, this does start to strengthen a lot more for the South Central, maybe seeing some St. Louis, 2,100, Springfield, around close to 4,000, and look at these numbers north of Abilene. We're going to be seeing a 5,000s here for sure. 5,000, uh, getting close to 5,100. Waco, 5,200. Tyler, 4,500. Uh, we're going to be seeing some more and more 5,000s here. Very impressive amount of energy. Even by later tonight, it does kind of fall apart a little bit. And then by later tomorrow morning, numbers do die down a little bit. And then this moisture flow will be now moving towards uh, this, the northeast. Uh, so that could bring it a bit higher numbers now. For the south, uh, for the southeast, now going to be seeing a bit more numbers now to the Florida Panhandle, Georgia. You guys are going to be seeing a bit more numbers. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope it did help you prepare. I will have another video on the severe weather update throughout the day. So I'm not going to be posting on this heat, this heat wave. I do apologize if anybody wanted that upload, but this is the priority right here. We have a moderate risk. That means we're definitely going to be focusing on it all day. Bye, guys.